everyone, welcome back to the 20 Minute Cooking School. I have been away and I am now back. Uh, had a week off, everything's great, ate a lot of food, uh, and we're back. Um, so you know the feeling when you come back from holiday and you're like, okay, <laughs> it's enough with like the cocktails, the desserts, the chocolates, the like heavy dinners, and you just wanna sort of get back to your routine. So what, I thought we would do an omelet today um, hi Lori, hello. We're gonna make an omelet today because um, I learned something recently, a new kind of a method, method-ish, of making an omelet and it has changed my life. So I eat a lot more omelets now. I find this is just so delicious, it's very easy. It's of course, obviously with an omelet, it's super fast. Anything to do with eggs is always gonna be very fast. But this is like a lighter, fluffier, more custardy, wonderful omelet. So, I thought I'd do that today and also kind of like talk through a bunch of other things I've heard about making omelets, which oh, frankly, a lot of malarkey, a lot of flim flam. Don't need a lot of that stuff. Uh, now, the, I often say that an omelet is, um, an omelet is like a, um, well, let's tell you, let me tell you what an omelet is not. So an omelet is not a place to put all your leftovers. I know, and you think, well, What's wrong with Claire's hair? Okay, you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna put my hair up, because that's polite. Um, so sometimes you think, oh yeah, I'm making an omelet, I'll just throw in this leftover this and this leftover that, and that's fine. You know what, that's fine. If you're actually aiming to you know, use up all your leftovers, that's fine. But if you're actually aiming to make a proper omelet, uh, all you're supposed to put in there is eggs and salt and a bit of butter or something for the pan. So uh, I'm gonna allow myself a little bit of Parmesan cheese or cheddar cheese, but you don't even really have to have, to have that. And so you, know, you go to these brunch places and they're like, here's a three egg omelet with uh, smoked chicken and jalapenos and pulled pork and uh, blah, 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 salsa verde. It's like, yeah, pointless. So this is a proper French omelet. Uh, I call it French just because it's such a thing in, in, in like official chefidom to uh, to kind of for a young chef to prove herself, she has to be able to make an omelet, basically not with a nonstick pan, but like with a stick pan. And uh, it has to come out with it cannot be golden brown at all. It has to be softly runny. It has to be perfectly almond shaped or like cigar shaped. You know, it's like voyon donc. Anyway. Um, I'm going to show you my way, which is, ends up with the same kind of thing, but a lot less um, snooty. Uh, you always end up with a scrambled eggs. Ooh, well, this is like a combination of scrambled eggs and omelet. It's scrambled eggs that are held together in omelet shape. So I often say omelet is a combination of, it's, it's a way to showcase your technique and it's a way to showcase the flavor of eggs. So technique, um, really gear. You need a non-stick frying pan. Now, if you wanna go back in time in the 1800s and be a fancy French chef, uh, you can do this without a non-stick frying pan. But since we have the beauty of the non-stick, then I highly, highly insist, uh, encourage, not insist, highly, highly encourage and suggest that should you uh, enjoy eating eggs uh, more than once a year, that you invest $25 in uh, a non-stick pan. Now, this is a seven incher. This is key, this is key. So you get your ruler out and you measure across the top here, mm -hmm, uh, seven inches, right? All the way across here. So that's important because, you know, you don't have to be a genius to know that if you take two eggs and you put them in a 10 inch pan, you're gonna end up with a very, very skinny, skinny omelet. So I find for two eggs, seven inch pan is just right. Now, if you need more than two eggs in your uh, omelet and you need three eggs and you might want a slightly bigger pan because I find seven inches, two eggs, perfection. Now, as you can see, this is like, this is not an ad for T-Fowl because this pan, <laughs> we use this pan every day, at least, at least once a day. Um, fried eggs, scrambled eggs, heating up leftovers, making a single pancake, perfect for crepes, perfect for omelets, etc. Um, but this is um, not in the best shape. Like it's got a couple of scratches all up in there. Uh, to be honest with you, it's time for me to get a new one, but I can still make a delicious omelet with this. Um, but when it gets little cracks in that, first of all, that means that the surface is coming up. Don't want to eat that. And second of all, your omelet is going to stick to that. So it's not going to be as beautiful. Okay, uh, that is the pan. And then this is just a bowl for the eggs. This is the, this is the little tip 
that uh, this is a little gear change that kind of changed my life. So I have this little silicone whisk purchased so that Thomas would help me make pancakes. Thomas no longer likes to make pancakes, uh, which is the way of children. As soon as you get them nailed down on something they like, they decide they don't like it anymore. Um, but I use this all the time. So it's a little silicone whisk. Um, and this is what I'm going to do use to actually whisk the omelet in the pan. Brace yourselves. It's going to be awesome. So um, five, six, seven dollars. I think I got a set of two for twelve dollars at Canadian Tire. Get them wherever. I'll put a link up um, to something on Amazon that's just right. Uh, if you don't have one of those, you could even just use a little bamboo spoon. Um, and I'll, I'll use, I'll do both so that you can see how they both work. But the key is nonstick, nonstick. Uh, and then last and not least, this is a uh, heat proof uh, spatula. Uh, another little thin guy. This one is uh, scorched in many places. It's even in backwards right now. Uh, but this is just going to help me get the omelet out of the pan. Again, not necessary. The only thing that's really necessary is you need this guy. You have a designated egg pan and nothing else allowed to be in it, not washed with soap, according to Mrs. Stancy. That would be Kathy. Good one, Kathy. Good one. Also, you could use it for crepes. Just saying. Crepes and pancakes. But, so let's get started. So this is going to be a two-egger. I'm sure you don't need to see me crack eggs, but you're probably sick of looking at my face. Oh, can I just show you? Can I just show you? It's beautiful. My nephew Ross got me that as a present. Sweetest thing in the entire world. I love it. I love it, Ross. I love it. Uh, okay, so here's Claire cracking eggs. Um, I'm going to use two eggs. Hey, did you know that most people think brown eggs are healthier than white eggs? Gay. Not true. White eggs, brown eggs, identical. What's inside? It's what's inside that counts. Uh, you know, there's a metaphor lurking in there for diversity and world peace. We won't do that today. We're making an omelet. Okay, so um, egg in. You remember from me poaching eggs that the best place to crack an egg is not on the edge. No, but always on a flat surface because uh, you're less likely to shove little tiny shards of eggshell into your egg mixture. If you're just tuning in, this is the 20 Minute Cooking School. I am Claire Tansy. This is Claire Tansy's Kitchen. It is 4.08 and we're making a proper French omelet for the love of peanut butter. I know, right, Mike? Money's saved from birthday cakes. I doubt it, but very cute. Okay, so I'm just gonna whisk these up. This, um, my little silicone whisk is gonna help here. Uh, you don't really have to go either too hard or too soft. Just, you know, get them nicely mixed together. I like a goodly dose of salt. I'd say that's, let's call that a, let's call that an eighth of a teaspoon. Let's call it an eighth of a teaspoon of table salt which will be about an, almost a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. Okay, done. So now I'm gonna turn on the heat and I'm gonna go heat like, it's gonna be medium. So, okay, heat and omelets. Did you hear me say earlier that a proper, a proper omelet is not supposed to be at all brown on the outside? Were you shocked? Because when you go to the diner and you order your ham, cheddar, mushrooms, onion, sausage, red pepper, sun-dried tomato omelet, it's like browned, totally browned. So not that that's bad or bad for you, but that's just not correct. And what that's doing is it's actually burning the taste of the, it's like overcooking the eggs. So you're not getting the flavor of the eggs. Uh, you're just getting the flavor of the ham and the cheddar and the onions and etc. Now, if you don't like eggs, that's fine. And you're just trying to like get some protein into you. That's fine. But if you do like eggs and you love like, you know, a poached egg or a fried egg or a hard boiled egg or a supper, you know, yeah, I, I could go on, but I'll stop. Um, you want the omelet to actually show off the flavor of the eggs. So you don't want it to be burnt. You want it to be just nicely cooked. And I'm sure you've heard that eggs are very delicate little creatures. They're just like orchids and they need to be treated with love. So I'm gonna, this is just over medium heat, preheating, and I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of butter. Uh, if I could find the butter. Here it is. Uh, you remember me, I always use salted butter because that's what I like. Oh, that was a little bit too much. I'm gonna take a little bit of that out. And see how it's, you can see it and you can hear it. It's foaming. Ooh, 
has such an appetizing smell. It's like a million tiny fans clapping their hands. That's done. And then, so this is, I don't want the butter to brown, I just want it to be melted, and then this goes in. Okay, now here's where I'm gonna blow your mind. Are you, are you ready? Immediately, I'm gonna start wiggling the pan and whisking the eggs. So I'm using the silicone whisk, and that means I'm not scratching the bottom of the pan. And yes, it probably looks like I'm making scrambled eggs, but wait, I'm not. Just wait. And if you didn't have the silicone whisk, yes, you could use your little tiny wooden spoon and do the same thing. It's not quite as good. You don't get quite as nice curds, so I like these guys. And I'm gonna pull in my little wispy bits here. Whoops, whoopsie. There we go, there we go, there we go. There we are. Now see, I used to be, and the, the omelet that's in my book um, is like you kind of lift up the edge and you let the egg run, but this, now look, it's still looking like scrambled eggs. Oh, I know, you're shocked. But I'm gonna stop whisking and scrambling and sort of replace everything into an even layer. See here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now what's happening is I've got these like, now turn the heat off because it's just about cooked. See, that's very soft in there. That's very lovely soft cooked egg, very soft. Uh, and should you want some cheese, now would be the time to just like sprinkle it on. This omelet, ooh, I need a plate. Girl needs a plate to eat an omelet. So it looked like scrambled eggs, right? Like it totally looked like I was scrambling eggs, but because you let it sort of stop and firm up at the end, it ends up coming out like this. So you take this when you take your nonstick and then I kind of just, no, there's nothing in this. This is just eggs. If you wanted some cheese or some herbs or something, you could sprinkle it down in the middle there. See, mm -hmm. see now that flips over like that nice and easy. And then I kind of also flip it over again like that. You see, no browning, no browning. And then I'm sure that there's an easier way to do this that's not backhanded, but you know, work on your backhand, why not? Out, encourage that baby to come out. That's it. Now the like truly official French finish, French way to finish this is you take yourself a paper towel and you actually shape it. <laughs> I never do this, never, never, never. Um, but why not? We still have seven minutes left in the 20 minute cooking school. Um, there we go. Now I would of course, a, a freshly ground pepper, monsieur. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's it, that's it man. That is a perfect, French omelet, not browned at all. And let me just cut into this beauty. So you can see how it's like, almost soft on the inside, a little bit slightly rolled. Um, two minutes, five minutes. I talked for easily 10 minutes there. Uh, and then um, that's it, you've got your beautiful omelet. So then you get to just kick it. Uh. It's delicious. Don't, <coughs> don't inhale it. What I love about this is it's fluffy, um, it's rich, it's creamy. It's not like that kind of dried out, um, unpleasant overcooked egg. It doesn't have that sulfury taste that overcooked egg gets as well. That's what really, really turns me off. Ever since I was pregnant, I cannot handle that sulfury taste of, or that sulfury smell of overcooked eggs. It just kills me. Um, and that is a perfect two egg omelet. So that is it. We're gonna have to end early. It's 4.14. Do you have any questions about omelets? Um, so like I said, two egg omelet, you want a seven inch pan. And like I said, it's probably time for me to get a new one. If you can, get yourself one of these the next time you see it. A regular whisk would be fine as well, but it's just that you don't always want to be using a metal utensil on a, on a non-stick pan. A um, little bit of butter. The end. Guys, enjoy your omelets. Let me know if you make one. I will post a recipe, although it's not really so much a recipe as a kind of a technique. Um, I'll post a recipe on the site, and um, next week, what did I say we were gonna do next week?
Just saying, we're gonna roast a chicken? Mm, no, we're not gonna roast a chicken. Anyway, we'll figure it out uh, what we're gonna do next week. But thank you so much for coming back and seeing me at the 20 Minute Cooking School. 20 Minute Cooking School. I am Claire Tansy. It has been lovely to have you here today. And uh, yeah, have a great night. Enjoy your omelets. Bye.